But I mean, I'm ready. I, I got everything yeah. pulled up here. Thankfully, I got a solid state drive computer where I can just boom, 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 you know, do quick restarts and stuff. And, you know, oh, that's more than maybe a minute. That's what my Mac Mini is. It's a, it's a solid state. I tell you, you know, I, I don't. They, I, they may not even make them anymore anyways, I guess, maybe. But it's like, I will never go back to the traditional hard drives again. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, not only my camera w- went up, but my little uh, mix master thing that controls uh, the microphone and all that, that also froze up <laughs> too. So I had to unplug that. I knew it was on your end. I figured it was that mixer because we had that same issue before, like, two or so podcasts ago and i'm like oh no (laughs) because once i started hearing you repeat in my earbuds i'm like oh no (laughs) (laughs) welcome to the go go kaiju show where we have a healthy obsession with kaiju i'm your co-host kent and with me is your other co-host jason how's it going peeps (laughs) so we both were ready to discuss planet of dinosaurs today um, we had watched the movie and we're ready to go. And then what do I see in my damn email this morning? A schedule for G Fest events. And so I contacted Jason and I'm like, do we change what we're going to do? And he goes, yep. <laughs> yo, yo, fun fact. I was actually going to watch Planet of Dinosaurs this morning as soon as I got back from breakfast but I still haven't watched it. And then oh, what you, you didn't watch it? I assumed but, but you probably what you, did last night. Uh, well, I was a bit busy and kind of got sidetracked, but when he, once you said that uh, the GFS 29 schedule is, I was like, hallelujah. <laughs> I was all set and ready to go. Like I had talking Something. points and facts and other stuff I was going to discuss about Planet of Dinosaurs. And then I saw that I'm like, son of a bitch. But then something <laughs> something told me in my uh, little noggin, like the <laughs> yeah, schedule is going to come out today. And sure, shoot, <laughs> it, it did come out. <laughs> Man, I'm a little bummed about that. But I, I forgot to ask you before we came on. This is our last podcast for a while, isn't it? Yeah, I know you mentioned as far as you probably being free uh Let's say the next couple or so weeks. Yeah, starting there, next but, Thursday through the third. And I know you meant you asked me if I was going to be available or maybe free to do if you wanted to do another one podcast or something. But yeah. but yeah, I wasn't entirely sure since getting ready and preparing to go over to Chicago in a few uh, days leading up to that. But uh, yeah, so I would say this would be uh, at least a final uh episode until we uh until post g fest here but uh i would like to try to get this one out <laughs> maybe a week ahead of time uh no uh i would say next weekend after the this recording so then kind of get it a couple weeks ahead of time on uh the whole event happening here yeah. So for those who are not familiar, first and foremost, this is our first like G Fest schedule that we're covering since uh, 22, just because G Fest show. <laughs> just because we didn't go last year. So we're like, whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, typically, what we've done in the past is that we'll do the G Fest schedule, we'll kind of run through it a little bit, make some comments where necessary. And then we're done. And then usually the weekend after G Fest is done is when we do a post G Fest show and we just kind of talk about the convention. You know, did we enjoy it? What were things we liked, didn't like, et cetera? And then we usually take the rest of July off. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's like the kind of around August we start up again. Um, I'll be out of town for a little bit in early August. Uh, I don't know exactly when, though, but yeah, I mean, I'll keep you posted. So um, really, there's only one more podcast that we're going to do after this, and then we're taking a hiatus for a bit. That's kind of usually what we do to kind of just rest up. It's sort of our reset season. Mm -hmm. Um, And then one of the things we need to figure out, at some point, we want to go back and finish up Common Rider. So we need to figure out at some point when we're going to do that. 
And then Jason's talked about uh, covering things like the anime Gamera series that was on Netflix, still is on Netflix as far as I'm aware of, um, the anime uh, Ultraman series, and then the most recent Ultraman movie on Netflix, Ultraman Rising. Mm. So uh, yeah, he's been talking about doing that as well. So we're not exactly sure where we're going to be headed uh, once we uh, resume in August, but we'll kind of just let everyone know to all one listener out there that actually listens to this podcast. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably say uh, at least cover the, the Netflix stuff because, I mean, it's just three separate things. And then I would say after that, continue on with the common writer, get that thing uh, out the window. <laughs> <laughs> if I may say, though, like the Gamera miniseries, we could do in one show because that's yeah. like six or so episodes, something like that. I, I think it's six. Yeah. Um, the Ultraman uh, show is three seasons. I think it's 12 episodes per season. So we're talking like uh, 36 episodes. That may take two shows, perhaps. Um like maybe we could divide it up, like do season one and two for an episode, then do the final season and overall thoughts for a second episode. And then uh, rising will just be one. So we're talking probably a total of what? Four shows, four to five between those, between those um, three things. So that right there would take us into like the first middle ish part of September. Mm -hmm. so yeah then maybe we can just resume with common rider after that yeah yeah so with that done. anywho why don't i bring up the window here i'm gonna have to still look at it on my end because well yeah can i enlarge it here i can i still don't know if i'm gonna see it all as well but nevertheless i still have it up on my end i just want to say and i told this to jason jason agreed with me <laughs> um <laughs> When I saw this email and I clicked on it and I was looking at stuff, you're going to see it here in just a second. Well, you um, see it right now. <laughs> well, move it to the next day, though. Uh, bam. Okay, see, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought that phrase would actually sound that funny, but it actually is. <laughs> okay, look at this. <laughs> Most of you know exactly where I'm going to go with this in terms of like what I think about this. This is a mess. And mm. I, I and but look, uh, one nice thing, Jason, like click on one of those things there. Uh, Just click on one. Things. It doesn't matter which one. OK, so like you click something and it'll come up with like some extra information. That's kind of cool. Even where <laughs> However, the venue is. Right. But it's such a fucking mess like I, I would say i would say at least the one good thing is that you can add these events to your calendar wherever you have it on and then you maybe get a notification on your phone and say oh wait i can't miss this certain yeah but google interestingly enough when i tried using my calendar it wanted to like access a bunch of other things which i thought was strange because i've been using gmail for like over 20 years and it's like why do you need more access like i log in and i use gmail multiple times a day and i've used the drive feature and i've used several other things like i don't know what like google has gotten to be pretty pathetic from um, their search feature has gotten to be worse too because they started incorporating AI more into their search engine. So, like, some of the results are kind of trashy now. Um, that's that's so I that's, don't know what that's for another day, but for me, I just but use I the, don't uh, understand I just, why Google Calendar like needs extra access somehow to whatever it is that they're looking for. Well, for me, I just but, use the uh, the Apple calendar because it just integrates into my phone, even though I've got an Android phone. I might I even mean. just use the calendar that comes with the Android phone that I have because that almost does the same exact thing. But, but anyways, <laughs> I don't like this one bit. And I know it goes by start time, which, okay, there's some semblance of organization, but I like the feature that you would get with your program when you go to a G-Fest where they start by time and then they have a list of rooms. So they'll on 
well, just to mad, like, okay, like looking from my angle. So on the left side would be the time. And then off the top are the rooms that they are going to be using for the convention. So you have like, uh, let's say nine to 10, and then they have all the rooms. And then this is here, this is here, and this is here. This is a mess. And probably, for those who are listening to the audio one, I'm sorry you can't see it. You just have to go to the G-Fest website and look it up. The one thing I want to add is that I'm. if you've gone to a website, you probably would have at least seen something, a page where they have an actual calendar. My suggestion is that they probably should have done something like that for this particular thing. Because then it's like... you. Know, you maybe have a list of a few things, but then it'll say more and then maybe pop up maybe sort of a list like this in a way. So I, that could have been a thing, but who knows? They maybe and tried then, it, but then probably didn't look good. And again, this isn't the worst thing in the world, but it's still pretty bad. And even look at, click the agenda part, just for example. Click the agenda part. That is no better. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a slightly more informative tab compared to the day because at least here it has a, a little bit of the extra info without having to click like on the day tab um, but it's still not that much better and then maybe the other good thing is that they've got these categorized or filtered so maybe like when you click on them you can filter out just the sessions that they have on here it's still or not able as to gaming <laughs> here and uh say art room but yeah and so okay i just quick question they're actually labeling dealer's room like kaiju world and kaiju island now yeah that's what i thought yeah because i think because i think they've extended uh the room for the dealer's room uh, this year to kind of accommodate a little bit more uh, space and all that stuff. But yeah, I'm with you. I'm not entirely sure why they're doing that. I mean, granted, and it I seems don't like have they're, the getting, they're getting some more sponsors and all that, you know, with Kaiju U, Big Bad Toy Store and some of the other ones, but I'm not entirely sure the reason behind the renaming. For me, I'm still going to go by the dealers where I'm guessing other people that attend that are going to be calling at the dealer's room. And I don't have the email in my inbox currently. I think it's in my trash. So if I were to take a moment <laughs> to look for it, I'd probably find it. But I think with the Kaiju Island that recently, that that was a recent development from my understanding when I read that email, like it's going to be in a separate location somewhere. I, I, that was, I thought they were going to be in the same room. I thought they were going to be in the same room. I, I was just Not that I remember. In fact, now that we're questioning it, let me see if I can find that email. But my understanding was when I read that email was that it's going to be in a different place because they were saying, oh, like we have some extra vendors that wanted to go. And since there was no space, like we're opening it up in a different spot. So let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, let me. Do, 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 do. And then also they were going to be doing a, an after party, which was kind of that Titanosaurus thing for for many years, but then now it's like you're going to have to pay an extra forty dollars or something like that. It was going to be at the Caddy Shack uh, on the final night. Uh, here it was in one of the more recent uh, emails. Uh, let me see here, Kaiju. Yeah, side. it's basically an adult thing. Uh, yeah, pretty much you have to be twenty one or older older to get in. Yeah, it's, and I'm not a fan of the Caddyshack restaurant. <laughs> uh, when we tried oh, them really? out, like the last, with the last time, um, um, I'm looking through my emails here. Feeling lucky. Maybe I don't have it anymore. Uh, no, I don't. So it's gone. So I must have cleaned them out my trash. For me, I usually just kind of leave them in my thing here so i'm trying to figure out which thing which <laughs> remind me too by the way i stumbled <laughs> upon this by accident uh i had downloaded like a while ago okay here tickets. here we go i got it i got it here so let's see here 
Uh, so it says we have some exciting news to share at GFS uh, as GFS approaches. This year, we've expanded our vendors room to make sure your experience, uh, your experience even better that doesn't sound right uh in addition and jd to our, is an english teacher yeah in addition <laughs> to our original vendors room now dubbed kaiju world we're thrilled to introduce a brand new space kaiju island both rooms will be packed with an incredible selection of vendors offering unique and exclusive items whether you're a longtime fan or new to the scene there's something for everyone to enjoy and discover Want to see who's going to be there? Check out the full lineup of our amazing vendors here on our website, which just links to the, uh, the vendor page. So it sounds uh, like it is a separate room. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It said both rooms or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, that was a yeah. joke I made on JD. Anyone out there who's getting their panties in a bunch, and I understand JD's not really the head of it anymore. Just relax okay just relax <laughs> <laughs> my gosh like it, it you like you have to tiptoe around some of these people anymore <laughs> yeah but anyways let's just kind of get back on track here so let's get started and try to make sense of this mess <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much at nine o'clock is kind of your usual things that are opening up you know, your film festival, Dojo Studios, Mania's Place, which is a, uh, kind of a place for kids and all that. And then Quiet Rooms, I'm not sure why that would be open at the same time. <laughs> it's like, like, Yori waking up, getting coffee and breakfast and all that. And it's like, okay, I want my Quiet Rooms. Like, uh... Well, if you're a parent <laughs> with real young kids and like they're either going off with another parent or they're in Mina's place and you're like, I'm going to leave you here, child, for an hour because you've been up for three hours with me and I'm sick of you already. I'm going to go to the quiet room. Yeah. And then also at the same time, it says Gamer versus Zegra, but then it says parentheses 2005. I, I was going to ask you that. Is, are they referencing the year that the um, DVD came out? Uh, I'm not sure because according to this pop up here, it just says directed by uh, Ryuta uh, Tasaki, and it says uh, venues and in international ballrooms A, B, and C. Oh, that's fan stuff. Yeah, that's okay. I was I sort of had a feeling it could have been, but I was like I wasn't entirely sure because I mean you got the film festival thing because then if it was. It should have probably just <laughs> been in part of that instead of just being its own thing. Well, they're showing like actual movies in the, because I saw that too. I'm like, did they not really know where they were placing it? And that's just a placeholder for the time being. And then, yeah, because now that you bring it up, because I'm like, that's not the director that actually directed that movie back then. At least I don't think so. Let me double check here. Here. Yes, yeah, so this I'll is Ryuta Tasaki here. Game room versus the Zebra. Because I don't think that's the director. Because I thought it was, um, yeah, Nor Noriaki Yuasa. Yeah, so it's not that. Yeah, because I thought Nor N Noriaki Yuasa directed all the Showa films except um, Barogon, and I'm not sure if he did super monster as well i don't think he did so that he did so he did most of them except one or two mm -hmm. yeah because because like it's like the anime gamera uh netflix thing wasn't <laughs> around at that time obviously so it's like oh it no, has no, to no. Be, so it has to be some sort of uh special fan thing that they're doing maybe as like a start theme for the film festival who knows because it because it's starting at around the same time as the film so festival. i take it that the film room isn't opening until later well it says film festival open and it's in the same venue at the same time oh uh, because i thought they were gonna start actually okay i missed that because um i thought they were gonna start listing the actual um movies they were gonna be showing now Oh man, well that just burst my bubble. <laughs> and because I was like, oh, I'll take Lincoln. 
because he likes the film room and Lincoln's coming this year for those that aren't aware. And uh, I thought he likes the film room. We'll start it off with Gamera. And then I thought, wait a minute, Gamera versus Zero wasn't produced in 2005 or are they talking about the DVD? And it wasn't until you brought up the window there and saw the director. I'm like, that's not the director. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I'm guessing the Gamer versus Zika is going to be the opening for the film festival because it's at the same time in the same venue there. And then, of course, at 10 o'clock, you got uh, the display room and then both Kaiju World and Island and then Tabletop. Gaming. Okay, and then pause, this is, pause for a second. Well, let me let me finish here. Uh, and then you got at least two panels starting here with starting with the 40th anniversary of the return of Godzilla or AKA Godzilla 1985 and then Ultraman in America. So is this the second year where they're doing uh, it? Like if you want to be near the front of the line for the dealer's room that they sold extra tickets for that. I, I thought I saw something like that. I have no idea. Cause I I don't know if they've done something like that. Let me hit. Let me see tickets. Although it may not even be up here. Let me take a look. I know they've got guys. tickets for the the after party okay. and then the passes and all that. Yeah. Okay. Because maybe they had a certain number and then they sold out or something. But I thought I saw something like this might be the second year in which they for people who want to be like near the front for when um, dealer's room opens, they were selling like $20, $25 tickets or something like that. Well, I know. I think that they were doing like the autograph stuff as far as. Yeah. That's been going like on for a things. while. Yeah. I will say this though. Like um, I definitely want to go see the return of Godzilla 40th anniversary panel. I think that is uh, I mean, that's become one of my favorite films over the last like 12 or so years. That one's been um, mine for forever because <laughs> I've rented that sucker so many times in the past. Yeah. Well, the Japanese cut is so much better. Um, but at the same time, I will say that the Ultraman in America sounds really good, too. But yeah, I think let's, let's personally for me, I'll, I'll go with the Return of Godzilla myself. Yeah, so it says uh, the Sky Turtle Nova editorial team will be joined by Subaraya executives. Oh, so there's going to be some yeah. Subaraya executives here. To You'll probably go to that to, one, or will you go to, to the Godzilla? To, <laughs> to unveil plans for the future of Ultraman in America, so we could probably get some behind-the-scenes stuff. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it sounds interesting. Um, I wish there was a way we could just like set up multiple cameras and then just have it record all day. And then we could relive some of those uh, panels that we couldn't visit. Um, but well, I, I think I'm going to go to the Return of Godzilla one. Well, I don't know if you've seen the email that uh, was it they GFS teamed up with Kaiju U. And I think they're going to be doing some live streaming of some of these uh, panels or events or what have you throughout. I mean, that's all convention. well and good if you're not attending, but for those of us that are like, is, are they going to keep those videos and like you could download them or something at a later time? I would assume that at least stream on YouTube or something of the sort. It would be nice. And then next up, uh, at around 10 30, just one thing is the story of Hong Guild Dong. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's take a look at this uh feature length animated classic korean film directed by shin don hyun uh so it's so it looks like it's gonna be in the uh the film festival uh room area there at uh 10 30 through 11 and then pretty much you got quite a few things from 11 with the Mecha G arcade opening, then got the autograph room opening some things at the tabletop gaming room. And then you got the 60th anniversary of Ghidorah, the three hit done monster. by, uh, um, and then you got Jaws versus Japan. Uh, like, Oh yeah, that's, that's pretty much it right there. 
60th anniversary of Ghidorah. Go into that one done by Kevin Horn. I know I've said it on previous uh, G Fest episodes. Kevin Horn is amazing. If you ever get a chance to go to not just one of his panels in general, but any time that he does, um, like a, a history, a, a, an anniversary of a film, you definitely want to go to those because more times than not, you're walking away with interesting information. And yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, and then I got one thing at kind of at an odd time at eleven thirty six. Uh, this Lake Merritt monster. I'm assuming, yeah, this one is a another fan made film. It would have been nice if they, with the fan, film festival thing, that they would have done a separate page instead of just like listening in random order and all that stuff, or just listen out and, and just a pop up thing for the film festival thing here. Um, but yeah, you got that uh, going on. And then at noon, got a few things here. The art room opening, uh, Monster Seafood Wars. I'm guessing that's for the film festival. Uh, every guy's all video game ever, which probably we played almost all of them <laughs> over the years. And then the Islands of Godzilla. Let's take a look at this one here. So uh, Ballroom C says, welcome to the Islands of Godzilla panel where we embark on an epic journey to explore the colossal world of everyone's favorite city, stopping Monster King. Uh, buckle up as we navigate the turbulent seas. Uh, there's an extra space and uncover. The there's mysteries. a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's, it happens in a lot of these descriptions. Of the islands that birthed Godzilla, like uh, Bikini Atoll, Delve deep into the heart of historical background behind uh, uh, behind these islands. Islands, <laughs> yeah, another, yeah, including the detail details from Godzilla minus one. Get ready for the monster sized uh, adventures. We discuss the legacy behind these islands. So and, it's a look at kind of the islands that have been referenced in the creation of Godzilla, and that helped to influence the idea of the genesis of Godzilla. Yeah, and I don't think I've haven't heard these names before. Uh, so that's that. And then one o'clock uh, time frame mo uh, model display room is opened. Another thing from Tabletop Gaming, and then something from Dojo Studios. Uh, break glass in case of kaiju. And then you got the sixty years of uh, Dogura. And then Mars. Uh, Probably being one of that one. Uh, original kaiju and robot toys so this one uh you don't have kevin horn in here uh so yeah they're gonna be kind of doing the same thing like kevin horn does with any of the anniversary panels here so yeah i think this one would at least be interesting during that uh time slot okay I got to skip to this alan henry read along featuring his book tony mahoney finds a new home Oh, <laughs> I mean, no disrespect. Who is Alan Henry and what the hell is this? Yeah, is says, Tony Mahoney a name of a monster he created? Like, is this some sort of funny, fictitious, like, kaiju book he wrote that's similar to, like, a Gojiro? Um, like, what is... Uh, let me look it up here. Tony Mahoney finds a new home. Like... <laughs> It's almost like you see uh, jewelry dealers in the dealer's room in years past. Yeah. <laughs> like, finds a new... And then also the same thing along with that uh, Tony Mahoney thing. The next one up at the, the 11.30 schedule, it says Big Jack Films the Movie. <laughs> I have no idea. But it says kaiju and other pop culture references all wrapped into two-hour film. So, Let me, yeah. Uh, well, I'm not seeing... I'm finding a person that's called Tony Mahoney, <laughs> um, but not the book here. Let me look up Alan Henry. Yeah. Alan Henry says actor. From Cocaine Bear? <laughs> 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 what? Um... <laughs> I'm looking for the author. Apparently, they're an author. There's an Alan Henry Hoover, Alan Hoover's son. You know what? 
I but, can't find anything. The, like, one thing, seems... <laughs> the one thing about about it though, three hours long. <laughs> oh God, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's good. I would. Be, uh, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> is this someone pulling a funny joke or something? Because I, seriously, like anybody who knows anything about this, please, uh, like put it on our uh, Facebook page or and, uh, YouTube description down below because I have no idea from. what this is and why it's there because unless he created a funny like fictitious kaiju book and the kaiju's name is Tony Mahoney like none of this makes any sense to me <laughs> yeah and then besides that in the two hour uh in the two o'clock uh section here you got another thing from Dojo Studios uh model thing 50 Years of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, which I know you're probably going to go to that one. Female leads of uh, Toho f- uh, films. So, um, yeah, this one's not a uh, Kevin Horan thing, but uh, the one familiar name here is Matt Frank uh, on this one. So, your typical uh, behind-the-scenes and celebration of those are Canada my family. favorite panels though <laughs> yeah so and then the three o'clock another tabletop gaming another dojo studios model and a specific discussion on godzilla minus one uh right that yeah and then secrets of japan sci-fi scripts and then another odd one for a film festival uh, film there so yeah nick crispino i think i've heard of him before so yeah it's just pretty much just uh talking about <laughs> the movie itself and then breaking records and all that uh sort of jazz there okay so i'm gonna fast forward again a sh- small bit here to eight versus monster at seven they say seven to eight, but the movie, of course, is longer than an hour. Are they not showing the entirety of these movies? Because if they aren't, I think that's kind of a cheat. I'm not entirely sure. Or I'm assuming that uh, maybe... Uh, I'm not sure the specific time myself anyways, but who who actually knows on that? And then in or the film festival, they, or if they might have mistakenly uh, screwed up or something there, who knows? And they're only showing a half hour of the whale god because they close the film festival thing down at uh, midnight. Mm-hmm. So l- let me just tell everyone this: I I wrote a review of that movie on uh, a different blog that I do for myself. And I bought the Blu-ray from SRS Cinema, got it when it came out here like two, three months ago, however long ago it was. I was disappointed. Um, it not only was it what I was, it, it was not what I was expecting, which in many levels is fine because sometimes, a lot of times I'll still um rate a movie and like a movie on its own terms but even on its own terms i still don't find the movie with consideration of how it's titled to be in as much of a connection with the main character hongo's uh incessant thirst for revenge to fall in line with how the actual movie itself is written with that being said i will say this if you go in not expecting a man obsessed with killing a whale, sort of in similar vein as Moby Dick, you actually probably will be okay. So for anyone who has not seen The Whale God, and I'm pretty sure, Jason, you have not, mm-hmm. don't go in expecting this. It does happen towards the end and stuff, and it's pretty interesting. Although there's one part towards the end which is I scratch my head. I'm like, this is one of the weirdest and kind of the dumbest things they could have done. But regardless, um, it is more than that. It is more about relations between people in this village. And there's one, the villain guy, 
the actor does a good job and the writing is good for his character where you will hate that guy. Let me just say one one word that will kind of like get your skin crawling. Rape. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm serious. That's in the movie. And like you will hate that dude. And the actor does a very good job of playing this awful human being. And whale god though otherwise um if you're like i said if you're looking for a man obsessed with trying to kill this whale and stuff good luck (laughs) you know i walked away from it going ha well that was really dark and not as fun as i was hoping it would be and then uh, of course you got pretty much everything else here pretty much uh describing some of the other movies and then some kaiju glam metal shark game and then you got your g pretty thing and you got this that uh one lost and found kaiju uh korean uh film the uh wayne meg uh wong mcgui wong mcgui yeah so i have be that. showing that i have that, that that one's also showing an hour as well it seems like some of the other ones that they have here is at least an hour and that's my concern is that they're not showing you the full movie. And I don't know if they're doing that for copyright reasons, for fear of like maybe someone could turn them in or something. I don't know. Um, but Space Monster Wong Magui, look, it's crazy, but uh, I own it. It's fun. If you are like me and you enjoy uh, a movie like Yangari Monster from the Deep, the 67 film, you will like Space Monster and Wong, Wong the Gui. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you got the opening ceremonies and then karaoke and then, yeah. Are they doing that. Pickwick anymore? I don't remember I seeing I believe they are still doing that. Um, I'm not sure if they have that uh, somewhere around here. Because uh, I could have sworn... Let me just check here. Pain Alice Gier, uh, film okay, festival. Yep, big quick. Oh, what are they showing this year? Uh, so it says Gamer Three, uh, the Fifty Four oh. Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Destroy, Son of Godzilla, Rebirth of Mothra Three. Very fun film. No, uh, no, 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 no. Like those are examples of what they've shown in the past. Oh, okay. So, so I have I'm, not seen guessing, anything as far as what they're doing this year. Yeah, I'm guessing they haven't quite announced that just yet. But if they re- release a schedule here just this uh, morning as of this recording, I would assume that the the announcement for the Pick, Pickwick movies are going to be coming fairly soon. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, <laughs> so I mean, to- you, look, look, here's the thing, Jason, you've been going through this. What are your thoughts like on this day one? I've kind of given some of my thoughts and, and the like here, like, like, what are you looking to do? What are your thoughts? I would at least say the first day is sort of jam packed with a lot of the anniversary panels this time around compared to the past uh, G Fest that we've gone to. I think they sort of sprinkled them uh, throughout the convention. It seemed like this time around, they were just kind of going at it heads like headstrong with the anniversary panels on the very first uh, day here. Uh, and then it just seems like there's a lot of things going on uh, compared to other years, obviously. It's just really jam-packed. And I think probably the, the other thing is trying to reduce the amount of people trying to go to the dealer's room and stuff, but obviously there's going to be there's still people yeah. going to line up no matter what. But uh, yeah, it just it just screams like a lot of stuff to do on the very first day. I like that though because um, some of the last three or four G Fest we've been to, I've kind of complained that um, some of the the panels haven't looked all that interesting, and the last couple g fests i've been to i didn't go to as many panels as i had like the first five six seven years i had gone and um i i just found just kind of the substance of some of them to be lacking there were even some anniversary panels that i had gone to 
uh, in some of the recent GFEs that I thought were pretty lacking as well, unfortunately. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case this year because you could have, you know, an anniversary panel and then go in there and there's not much of anything. But well, here, what I like is not only are there quite a few, even on the first day, but they're spread out to where I could go to all of them. Well, and at least with this year, it's sort of a special year, obviously being Godzilla's 70th anniversary and then a lot of anniversaries for uh, more of his well-known uh, villains such as King Ghidorah, Mecha Godzilla, and then you got Space Godzilla. I'm guessing they were going to have it on one of the other days here and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so speaking of which, uh, what are your thoughts on the first day? I mean, I already kind of said uh, my little piece there, but I like it. I mean, I, I like it very much. This is, by the way, folks, this is our first time actually looking at it and going through it. Uh, neither one of us has gone through it prior to this recording. Uh, and I'm just getting a brief um, look here. Oh, the whale god is going to be showing until 1.45 the next morning. Okay. Well, never mind then. Um, as I'm quickly just briefing through day two here not a whole lot is catching my eye on day two obviously um, yeah a lot of things open at kind of the same time yeah and with that said um on some level now that i've briefly seen what d2 kind of looks like part of me wishes that yeah maybe they would save a couple of those anniversary panels for um saturday speaking because speaking of which at 10 o'clock yep. is the Godzilla for Smothra. Anniversary Definitely be going panel. to that one. Yep. That's one of my all-time favorite Godzilla movies. And, Love that one. And let's see here. So they got some more tabletop interview interview with uh, Tosh uh, Toshio uh, Mike here from 11 to quarter at noon. They're in ballroom AB. <laughs> And let's see here. The Great Yokai War, the Guardians. Oh, that that one that kind of has um oh Daimajin in it. Yeah, it's the newest one. I got the uh, Blu-ray of that. Ria Ota. Yeah, here we go. The behind the scenes uh, Space Godzilla here with Kevin Horn and Ballroom. Yeah, Steve. that's basically another anniversary one because this year yeah. marks yeah, 30 years of of that one. Yeah, Underrated so movie. Yeah, definitely. Even though I would say it's the longest uh, Japanese Godzilla movie so far, I think at around two and a half hours. No, it's not. No, 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 no. It's like hour 45. Yeah, the like longest that. Japanese Godzilla movie is, I think, Shin Godzilla. Yeah, it's, it's either yeah. Shin or Final Wars. It's one of those. But uh, yeah, it seems like they're having a lot of the interviews kind of in the middle of the day because you got Toshiro Mike and then Ryo Ota. And then uh, Jeffrey Angles there. And then you got a lot of the model and Dojo Studio stuff happening there. Uh, the Barbados Project, I would say the film room there. Zone Fighter Season 2, Tabletop Gaming. Yeah, then you got another interview. Oh, a couple of interviews here with uh, Takuji Yamada, Alan Henry, Lake. Uh, let's see, you get Jim Groman, uh, Kaiju Kingdom podcast here, uh, the, 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 the Dojo Studios, Lights and on. Alan Henry, uh, interview. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't find him though on Google. I cannot. The, maybe it's the AI that they've incorporated in Google. Oh, see, he is part of Cocaine Bear. And yeah, you because know, got uh, the organizers is uh, Jessica, Jessica Same from Kaiju Kingdom, and then Martin Alt. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure out who this guy is. <laughs> I have a hard That's... time believing he could be Cocaine Bear guy, but he could be. He could be. I don't know what the heck this lights on one is in film festival. And then of course the pretty much the. The highlight of uh, second day's costume parade, as always. So, according to this, is going to be running through an hour and a half. I'm not sure if it's see. been longer than that. And then, of course, oh, you got the uh, Ma Mangled Skyscraper Award Ceremony beforehand, uh, too. 
and then a few movies. Yeah, Blood Spawn, Kane's Fall, and then Evie. All right, Jason. Thoughts on day two? Day two, you got, I would say it's more more or less kind of the uh, spotlight on the special guests here because you got pretty much all their interviews uh, kind of around the uh, middle part of the day all the way up to uh, 4 o'clock here. It, and it doesn't seem quite as jam-packed uh compared to the first day it would have been nice it was it would still kept on going here because it seems like a lot of stuff kind of happens around dojo studios and um the model room i i think it is and then pretty much i think a lot of stuff is going to be hinging on the costume parade uh which is towards the end of the day and kind of closing things out and then a lot with this mangle skyscraper the one thing that i'm surprised i'm not seeing compared to the first day is the g purdy like the regular g purdy uh on here because that usually happens like the the final thing wait until right before, sunday right before uh costume parade yeah i don't i saw that they want you to pre-register this year uh, there was a pre-registration where if you knew for sure you were going to participate in the Jeopardy, they wanted you to like through their site or something uh, to register yourself. But uh, what are your thoughts on day two here? Um, you know, and I just briefly went through the third and final day here. It's um, you, you had such an explosive day one that the con it's such a steep decline, at least in my opinion, in terms of what I would consider to be interesting uh, panels to go to. Day three is even sparse, more sparse in my opinion. Um, day two is fine. I definitely want to go to the Mothra versus Godzilla and the Space Godzilla panel. Obviously, we go to the costume parade. That's a given. I would, I would say... Otherwise... I would say I mean, the other... I would say the other thing is maybe like the the Ultraman 4K. That might be a bit interesting. Send film festival there. It might be interesting just to get a peek at like what it's going to look like in 4K. But to me, that's not worth hanging around any longer than maybe a couple minutes. Um, but yeah, I think really moving forward, it's like to me, day one is going to be filled with panels. There's only like one hour that I noticed. Uh, on that first day where I will finally have a break to have lunch. <laughs> um, but I'm seeing a lot of space for me to just do whatever on day two and certainly an awful lot again on day three. So um, I'm thinking days two and three for me probably take more uh, of an advantage to try to get into the dealer's room for anything. Um, probably go to the film festival as well and just kind of see what's playing there as well. Yeah, I would, oh, monster verse! Yeah, yeah. I would at least say this would probably be one of the big things to start in, kind of like what we've done in a few episodes ago, uh, a ten-year monster verse anniversary. So, I haven't yeah, seen um, Bob Eggleton on some of these because Bob usually likes to take part in uh, some of these types of. I panels. do see I Scrooge. I do see Scrooge Jones on this one here. I just hope that there is kind of this, and we talked about it when we talked about 10 years of the monster oh, here, here a while back, but my concern is it's going to be similar to, um, it's going to be similar to um, what they had with Pacific Rim Uprising, where you and I were like, okay, it's going to be sort of 50-50, you know, roughly half the panel is going to like it, the other half is not and then they would discuss no that i remember saying that was one of the worst panels i had ever been to at a g fest because it was all negativity and my concern for something like this monsterverse because for whatever strange reason it does seem to be pretty polarizing with the kaiju uh group my concern is that's going to be all negative well we'll have to find out but then you also got uh guys all final wars anniversary uh paint all there and let's see what else uh video contest entries 
Uh, and then towards the end, he got the guys all turned 70. It would have been nice if this was on the first day. It should have been, to be honest, because yeah. a lot of people do leave on Sundays. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people got to get to work the yeah. next day. Like, that should have been... Uh, that should have been either middle of the day, if not towards the end before they do the opening ceremonies. Oh, and then I just realized this a tribute to Kim Paccio, uh, right there. It looks like day three, though, they're finally showing some of the Noriaki Yuasa gamera films. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got uh, Gauss there. Did you see earlier in the day at 10 o'clock? Ape X Mecha Ape New World Order. Oh, yeah, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I have to find that, maybe. Yeah, so pretty much it's, yeah, the third day is pretty sparse. It, yeah, because, like, the only thing I can see on here uh, that I can actually go to is something, like, that starts at 1 o'clock, which is the monster first thing, and then pretty much, yeah, it's like, that's pretty much all there is from third days. Something that I would want to go to starts at one o'clock here. And then pretty much it's just a few more hours uh, after that. Uh, it's like, yeah, monster verse. And then you got the awards ceremony. I can see the monster verse. God's all final wars. Uh, yeah. The God's all turns 70. And may try to see what this G fan and G tour thing because I know they uh let's see here this falls G tour also yeah because I know that they were planning on doing another G tour thing uh to Japan but they sort of canceled on that because they weren't sure what was going to happen over in Japan but it seems like they're moving forward with the uh, G tour this fall so I kind of want to see what's going on there. Maybe, uh, Kaiju Com- uh, fashions. Uh, by the way, I know we went to like oh, yeah. briefly oh. one of those an odd number of years ago. What is that about again? Uh, I think they had like some kind of uh, someone brought in like uh, one of the pro- uh, movie projectors and then pulled up a screen. They were watching some of the movies and stuff. On film and uh, maybe some other stuff. Like oh, Kaiju Song and, and all that. Dance. Yeah. Oh, we went to one of those. Yeah, Stan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love you, Stan. I'm sorry. It's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> Has nothing to, <laughs> nothing against you. And then Kaiju Collection of Shorts. Yeah. And then I'm not seeing... Okay, here we go. Yeah. We'll discuss future of e fanzine and and I thought he wasn't coming audience. to America anymore because of his <laughs> because of his vaccine stance because that's what he said in 22 when in that program for G Fest that year. But yeah, so I wonder if they're gonna do like any suggestions or something during that panel. But yeah, I can only see a few things to go to on the third day. Yeah. I mean, um, I just am going to say this, like I think compared to G fest in 2022 and gosh, what was it in 2019? Geez, 2019, probably maybe even 2018. Like I think for the first time in, in several G fest, um, I, I think that this definitely holds quite a bit of promise. To, um, I know we've always say that, but then when once after the post G Fest and stuff, it's like, uh, it's always the same. Blah, blah, right. Blah. But I'm, well, you know, and part of that I think is just us going to enough um, of uh, en- enough. G Fest over the years because you yeah. and I, I remember when we went in 2014, part of it was the people's negative reaction at that time, anyways, of the 2014 Godzilla film, which I thought was way overblown. Um, 
I remember even then, and that was our third G Fest we went to, that it was already starting to feel oh, yeah, a little G-Fest familiar. 21. Yeah, because I think yeah, G Fest twenty one, I think so far, you know, when when we were doing rankings about the G Fest that we've gone to, I think that was still sort of the worst ones that we've gone to. I yeah, because and then the like, best, yeah. best one was uh number twenty three. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 22 and 23, I remember, were very, very good. Um, And then, so let's see, we're what? That was 2015, 2016. And then, like, 2017, 2018, 2019 were middle of the road. Mm -hmm. Um, But, um, I mean, a lot of time has passed. I, I kept all the programs. I would have to go through all the programs and really kind of get an idea of what was there at the specific G Fest to try to like recall, okay, what, what did I see? How did I enjoy it? So, mm-hmm. yeah. And, but this one, they at least make the first day, like they kind of hit you with a semi truck with a bunch of stuff <laughs> in there, but then it just feels like, okay, we're going to let you rest. Uh, for the well, and it, of- the convention it would be nice if they would have sprinkled some of the other stuff throughout well here's the thing it all depends on who you are and what your interests are i think for some people like they'll be busy really from the word go all the way until it stops which is great um but for me as i've always stated on this podcast my favorite panels are the anniversary panels and for me personally even though i have no scheduling conflicts with any of those on the first day, which is great. Like for the first time in a long while, I actually don't have that problem. And there's a time for first, I guess. Um, (laughs) I would have appreciated like if they took two or three of them and then sprinkled them on Saturday and Sunday personally. Um, But you know what? I I mean, like I said, they're definitely after day one, there's going to be more room for me to just kind of do whatever. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. One hand that may be a good thing because I may be exhausted after that first day. Anyways, uh, I'm barely going to have enough time to get lunch that day. And I've got my son with me. Who knows? I may even miss some of these panels on some level because I may have to cart him off somewhere or something. I don't know. But, and, and like I mentioned earlier, I, I think the first day is jam packed for the reason of trying to prevent a lot of people going to dealer's room. But, when you have so much going on in one day, but then not have a whole lot for the remainder of the convention, then you're going to still have a lot of people still jam packed no matter what I would. So yeah, it could have at least sprinkled some, some stuff throughout the convention. Well, let me just say this. And I think we discussed it back in 22 when we did our, uh, overall discussion of the convention that year. Um, because of the enormous size of the dealer's room now at the Hyatt Hotel, <laughs> you're unlike Crown Plaza there, you're really not waiting in line that long. Like you could be at the tail end, which goes all the way, we'll just say, you know, in, in a very hyperbolic way, all the way up to the check-in desk at the hotel. Mm-hmm. You'll get in within five, 10 minutes. But I mean, it, it moves fast. It's big. There's plenty of space. A lot of people, after the first half hour or so, enough of them come out to where it really starts going. But I think pr- probably with the inclusion of, well, renaming the dealer's room to Kaiju World and then adding on this Kaiju Island thing, I think that's probably also the reason is to try to decongest uh, a lot of people from going into being concentrated into one room. So then they probably have another big room to, uh, trying to reduce the amount of so much concentration into one room. So that could be the other obvious reason. I don't think it's going to be a big room like the dealer's room because there's only so much space in that hotel. And who knows if they're going to have other things going on in the hotel at that time. Yeah, because um, it says Heathrow A and B, and I'm not entirely those sure. Those I don't think are as big because it's called Island. Island is smaller than World. So my guess is it's probably a fraction of the size. Yeah, because I'm not sure. Uh, Let me pull up the hotel here. 
Weird. I'm not entirely sure where that those are located. Because I thought there was a map or something that we saw on here several years ago. Um, I could be wrong. Yeah, let's see here. I wonder if he can go to the hotel from here. Meetings in advance. Let me see if there's... Yeah, huh, interesting, I'm not seen. Yeah, because Grand Ballroom, that's first floor. Oh, that's lobby level. Oh, so they don't have the basement level. So Heathrow, I think... Oh, wait a minute, no, international level. Okay, wait a minute, there it is. Yeah, it's on the bottom. So Heathrow A and B. Yeah, it's where the stairs are. Okay, um, yeah. It's that same area where when we went in 22, yeah, yeah. they had some of the um, autograph sessions going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I remember, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Right down. Right because I, I was saying, I'm like, I think that's where you're going to have like a specialty dealer or dealers in there. They'll have, uh, you know, some specialty items. Maybe like um, the, those that have already seen some of the random jewelry stuff. And <laughs> No, not that. I'm talking about like maybe a Big Bad Toy Store or something like that. I, I, That's, I think they probably would have them in the main one, though, if it's a Big Bad Toy Store, because they're they're sponsoring the, the event. But here's the thing. Those rooms aren't big at yeah. all. Obviously because not. I remember they used that in 22 when we last went, they used that for the autograph because the one gal who was the main character of Godzilla X Mecha Godzilla was in there and they had like some props and some other things. That's not a big space. Mm -hmm. That isn't. I mean, that's yeah. small. Yeah, because I know because <laughs> I know these other spaces right over here, that's usually taken up by either the the model, the modeling stuff, uh, the arcade and is obviously the uh the film room and the international section here on the left side and yeah uh, as far as the lobby level there isn't much there so i mean they could have they could have had them in the rosemont ballroom section there or like some of these other sections here uh, well uh, let's kind of keep things closer together well, here's the thing, though. Um, um, that hotel's so big. Like when we were there two years ago, you had two or three other groups in that hotel yeah. doing things as well. So it's very possible that uh, there could be other groups. But then at the same time, it's possible that maybe they didn't feel like they needed that space G Fest did. And maybe the pricing, too, could be uh, a deterrent as well. I'm probably guessing it could have been uh, maybe uh, like I think it's space related. Because why get a large space if you don't really need it? I could be, but then I'll be like, if if there's going to be a lot of people in in that room too, uh, who knows? We'll have to find out. Um, then I'm guessing like maybe sometime down the road, they'll maybe get one of the rooms uh, reserved for, for that in the Rosemont ballroom. I'm, I'm, I'm going to predict it right now <laughs> that they're probably going to be doing that uh, down. You want to find out next year? <laughs> well, I'm probably going to be elsewhere. <laughs> <by then. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have muted yourself. <laughs> well, at I least we're not that in. That's funny. <laughs> at least we're not live. that in. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's final thoughts, Jason. As uh, you know, because this is our last podcast for like what three weeks or so. Something like that. Yeah. I, like I said, it's pretty, like, pretty much, uh, like, opens up with a bane on the very first day with so much stuff uh, to do here. Um, it would have been obviously nice if this was on a calendar format uh, for that matter. But uh, yeah, first day is just like so much stuff to do. And then pretty much second day, it just kind of sort of kind of goes down on the 
downward roller coaster. So it was just like eh, day two is kind of in the middle of the road. And then third, there's really not much else to do except uh, things that start at one o'clock, which is towards literally the end of the convention there. Pretty much you got all of the regular stuff that opens and things start to close up. But then you got Jeopardy starting on on the third and final day, which is a bit strange in a way because they usually do that kind of uh, I would I think they used to do it on the first day, maybe like the first round or something like that, or they started on the second day and just have it go all the way right up to the costume parade. But having it on the third and final day is it's a bit strange to me. Um, when you have people pretty much starting to head home and stuff right around this time frame here. And uh, yeah, so third day is just kind of not much going on. There is just like wham on the first day and then <laughs> not much else after that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just think overall with the convention, I think this is a uh, very promising and um, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I the the first day is definitely going to be um, is definitely going to be busy, and then kind of from that point on, it's going to gradually decrease. At least it is for me. Um, really looking forward to it. I'm I'm excited about this year. Uh, like I said, we didn't go last year, so I think that's part of the reason why I'm excited about going this year. And um, yeah, I'm just really hoping that things will go well. I've been trying to uh, kind of periodically, as you've been talking here over the last few minutes, looking for like Ape versus Mecha Ape and Ape X Mecha Ape New World Order DVDs. Uh, I really can't find them. So I'm wondering if Asylum is no longer making DVDs now or what the deal is. So uh, anybody that can point me towards like a YouTube channel that streams these or whatever I would be very appreciative. Well, I know, <laughs> excuse me. Well, I know that they uh, add them to Amazon Prime Video, which I've seen at least a couple of them. I'm not entirely sure if they right. have the, that NWO one. I would rather have like a physical copy. <laughs> That's how I am, dude. I'm old school. Yeah, you old fart. Uh, I got an Xbox Series X. Which does the diss. I mean, I love the physical media. Oh, well. But, but uh, I'm excited. I, yeah. I think, um, you know, like I said, I don't know how things are going to unfold with Lincoln in tow. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think I may end up spending more time perhaps in the film room on days two and three when I'm not going to certain uh, panels. But... Um, uh, otherwise, I mean, like I was telling Jason, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm bringing a portable DVD player with a number of movies along uh, because we're going to be there Monday, July 8th. And so we're going to have plenty of time to just kind of do whatever. And one of the things that I think we're going to do even in the days leading up to G-Fest is watch some films. So even if I don't find something in the film room that I like, just head up to the room throw in a throw in a movie and watch it maybe a monster verse movie for all you haters in there just just especially for you i'll dedicate it to all you haters out there well and then also give you a time to go to the dealer room and all that because it's right felt like over the years like you didn't really have time or like when you want to go sort of conflicts with uh your schedule and all that stuff although first day is sort of does that because i mean you got a shit ton of stuff happening going on like literally non-stop uh on the first day but then af after day one it's just kind of do your own thing well and for me the dealer's room used to be a bigger deal just because not only was it a place to find a lot of unique godzilla stuff because of the internet and because of being exposed to all this stuff and because I'm older now, I'm looking at my collecting habits a lot differently than I did when we first started going. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, like I'm always, every time I go, I'm definitely always going to get a G fest shirt. The only time in which I didn't do that was the first time we went. And I regret that. Um, but otherwise I always get a G fest t-shirt. See what else I don't need any more shirts though. I got two. Yeah, of them. after um, <laughs> after our last time a couple of years ago, I bought I think twelve or thirteen t shirts, including this one here. And I'm just like, I don't want any more. <laughs> I'm a sucker for really cool t shirts, so I don't need them. But I could see I myself buying more. <laughs> I I actually can't remember the last time I bought a, a G Fest related t shirt. I think it might have been. I I think it was the G Fest twenty five. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> what are you I hiding under that desk? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. For those how that are listening to the audio appeared. version, a bunch of balloons just popped up from under Jason's desk. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it was the uh, the twenty fifth anniversary of G Fest where it had the big twenty five and stuff on. I think that was the last time I got a G Fest shirt. But, uh, well, if you ever want to get rid of that 19 one, hand it over to me because I can't find them. So, yeah, I think I did see uh, a majority of them, but put them in a uh, plastic container uh, upstairs in my closet. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I used yeah. to go after movies, shows, and soundtracks, <laughs> but I have. Other than the show, a Gamera series, which I don't think you can buy except for like in collections uh, that are kind of like a best of CDs. I have all the soundtracks that I want and need movies. I'm all caught up with shows. Well, Shuwat is not there anymore. I think this is year two of when Shuwat is no longer going to be there. So, um, you know, there you go. So it's a, just a, I, I guarantee you Lincoln again sure. is going to be the one to drain the money because I remember in 22 when we went in immediately as soon as we went in the door he spent like 120 bucks because there was this large gamma plushie which was like 60 bucks it was outrageously expensive as far as I'm concerned and then yeah the one I little figure telling, that costed was it 45 50 bucks? bucks it was 50 <laughs> bucks for the um male mudo mm -hmm. from the 2014 and i will never purchase from that dealer again for and, me for me i think i'm gonna concentrate more on the the sofa b uh figures because like i i need uh, i've got plenty of room for some of them like back here like some of these cabinets and all that especially the the cabinet over here where i used to have all the he-man figures which I gave to Ken. I got it now <laughs> a, a few months ago, but I do at least have uh, one sofa B over there. That's it currently in the box. It's uh, the, the cruncher roll exclusive uh, space Godzilla uh, sofa B. Are you going to visit that panel on the third and final day? That's talking about sofa B one Oh one. Let's uh, let me just uh, take a look here. Um, I've already closed out the window, so I'm not going to, bring it up again uh, uh let's see here i got it up on my okay soft vinyl toy self would be 101 from 10 a.m to quarter 11 yeah ballroom c before shma before x plus before bandai there was soft vinyl classic method toy production continues to this day blah 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 uh, history and impact of the traditional style of toy making from toy maker himself, Alex Rushdie of Seismic Toys. I know I've been wanting to get a couple of their uh, Sofa B toys uh, the last time I was there, but <laughs> didn't get the chance to. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully this year I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I my collecting habits have changed so dramatically over I know, the years. And I know many years, like we were so into the Bandai figures and all that, but then as soon as we grow up and all that stuff, it's like Bandai stuff anymore is just kind of kind of going on. No, I still ways. like Bandai. I, I do. But I mean, like this shelf right here, that's all Bandai. Yeah, and what I got there is just Bandai Godzilla's. Yeah. That's what I got there. Um, I have everything I want from the new New Empire movie. 
I've got the yeah, minus got, one figure on this shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. I've got move I've got all the properly. <laughs> I've got all the GXK figures I <laughs> that I want. Just the, the four right there. That's about it for me. <laughs> you didn't get Suko and Titanus Doug? They they didn't have any of those. Uh they they only just have the the four the big four. Do you want me to get you a Suko Titanus Doug? Nah, I'm, I can I'm find good. them up here. <laughs> I'm good. I can find them up here and give them to you because I'm, I gotta I'm give, good. <laughs> I'm giving you the novelization of the movie, so I'm good. I don't think so. You got to be a completionist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only a completionist yeah, at, on the movies. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, me too. To me, it's like. When it comes to the movie stuff, it's the movies and then the soundtracks. I still have yet to listen to the soundtracks to New Empire and Minus One. Mm -hmm. I just have not gotten to those. I've had some time at points to get to them. I just didn't do it. <laughs> I mean, since being subscribed to Spotify over the years, I just kind of listened to them through there. So. I still like owning them. Yeah. Old, old school. I like the CDs. Shocker. I like the CDs and the DVDs and the Blu-rays. That's what I like. Mm hmm Yeah. I bet you do. <laughs> that's that's cool, bro. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it we're done. <laughs> I can't uh, think of anything else unless if there's so, one more thing you want to add. That's G-Fest. Oh, shit. What number are we on? <laughs> Chief of some shit. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? 20... 29. 29. I almost said 29. I'm like, no, I can't be that far. Okay. So, Chief has 29. So, uh, again, yeah. I mean, I think we're both saying the same thing in that it's looking very promising. Day is The uh, first day is uh, packed, and then it just kind of peters out from there. Um, but looking promising. Looking fun. Looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah. We'll we'll see some of you fellow bozos in a couple of weeks here. <laughs> All right. And if you're watching us on YouTube, Rumble, wherever you're watching us from, if you see you see a subscribe button down below, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as smash the like button. Um as well. If you have any discussions on any of the panels and stuff, make sure to have your uh comments down below the video wherever you're watching us from. So yeah. Other than that, we'll See you guys in the next few weeks with uh, the post G Fest discussion, like what we always do. <laughs> if you see us, come up to us. We'd love to meet you, chat with you for a moment or two, and then just sh share some thoughts. Hey, yeah. how's it going? How's your day? <laughs> What'd you think of New Empire? Minus one. You consider that the greatest or great Godzilla movie? <laughs> what do you? What do you think of the, the 98 Godzilla? <laughs> your answer better be a very positive one. <laughs> Otherwise, if you're close enough and within the reach of my hand, I will slap you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys in the next few weeks. Hopefully. Don't be a stranger. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. 